Okay, here we go. I'm Jasu Bakuhatsu. Welcome back to Let's Play Plock. Now, Let's Play Plock is over. Plock is Plock is the good game that ends when you finish Rocky Fellow. We're playing Flea Pit now, which actually I believe was Plock actually came up. This is actually another bit of research I remember. It's like there was a an earlier an arcade game that the Pickford brothers were going to make that I believe also starred Plock, and I believe it was called like Flea Pit or something, and it basically was what we're about to see here. From what I understand, again, you can, I might be misremembering, I don't remember all the details, you can look it up on uh, the Pickford Brothers website, but uh, yeah, Flea Pit, I believe, was going to be the uh, Plox sort of arcade outing, which uh, basically, from what I understand, was going to work the same way that these Flea Pit levels work, because yeah, We've spent all this time throughout this game kind of mastering the basic mechanics of Plock. His tricky hitbox, the two different kinds of jumps, the way his limbs fly off, and the pluck, and the hopping controls. It's like we are Plock masters at this point, so what better way to finish off the game than to sort of, you know, sort of an ultimate challenge. They haven't really, we've had hard levels, but the game hasn't really pushed our plocking skills to the limit just yet. So the best way to end the game at this point would just, just be like a big slew of like really challenging, it's like, you know, Cotton Island 3.0 with like some super challenging plocking levels. That's not what we fucking get. We get vehicle stages instead. All of the vehicles that uh, you can, that you get to use in the different uh, warp stages, the bonus stages for the warps that uh, you saw one of them that I just kind of showed off. But uh, yeah, all of those stages use different vehicles and uh, yeah, basically the way en the game ends is with a bunch of vehicle stages. Thankfully there's no timer on these, but uh, yeah, so much for all the fucking clock skills that you built up to this point. It's just uh, nothing but vehicle stages from here on out, which is, I guess, not the worst thing in the world in theory. Like I said, it would be so much better to actually like use use the actual freaking plock gameplay that like the, the players has been like that the game is like a test of that the game is all about that the players have spent the entire game mastering up to this point and practicing. But no, instead we get the flea pit and vehicle levels instead, and all of the vehicles handle differently. So it's not even a matter of like, you know, it's like, okay, we did the pluck, we practiced our pluck skills up until now, now we practice our unicycle skills or our vehicle skills. No, all of the vehicles handle completely differently. They have totally different uh, jumping, different, completely different acceleration curves. Actually, the first one there is actually really easy, but they'll get tougher as we go through. And actually, even aesthetically, I think the Flea Pit kind of has the same problem that I had with uh, Cotton Island, which is that it's just basically this just the same graphic set and the same background music. Absolutely no uh, visual variety in any of these stages. What you've seen is all you're going to see throughout the rest of the level. Or there are a couple more enemies uh, that we'll see in the future levels, but that's it, basically. Absolutely despise the fucking flea pit, and it, it's yeah. It's just some of the some of the vehicles are more annoying than others. The unicycle is actually one of the more friendlier, the more user friendly vehicles. I think it's not that difficult to control. It has a pretty good attack actually, but uh, yeah. And of course, it figures that it being the friendliest and easiest to control. Of course, it's in like the intro stage. It's like hardly even a level. And we don't even get to use it. No, they saved they saved the sh the long levels uh, for the shitty vehicles, or I guess other way around. They saved the shittiest vehicles for the longest levels. This one here is pretty annoying. It handles it's it's got a bit more traction on it than the unicycle, so it's actually a little bit easier to control. The attack isn't quite as useful. It's kind of annoying, or uh, no, sorry, it's kind of useful actually how it uh, goes up. Uh, the the hills and slopes with you. Uh, the main trouble, actually, this is actually another one of the easier levels. We uh, won't be really seeing like the true hell of the flea pits until about three or four levels in, I think it is. Oh, and again, the the invisibility frame thing hurts in the flea pit levels more than anything because every enemy in these levels is uh, three hits to kill. Ooh, mercifully, or actually, I'm gonna. Oh dear. Okay, I was gonna say I'm gonna go ahead a bit and maybe come back here. Oh yeah, it's perfect. I saved that for just the right time. Want to make want to make the most out of those fruit health pickups? Fuck. 
Yeah, it's it, yeah. The way the vehicles handle, they have like really, uh, they have a lot of inertia. They tend to, or inertia is the wrong word. A lot of acceleration and deceleration. A, a lot of physics, I guess, going on with the way the vehicles handle. Oh, whoops! I thought that was the end of the level. Never assumed that. But yeah, the, just the way, and the, yeah, the way you're like rolling down slopes and stuff, and the way you accelerate so quickly, and the way it kind of rolls, takes a second to roll to a stop, you'd think that these would be levels where you want to, you know, just blitz through. In fact, that's kind of the style of game, the, the kind of vehicle style of gameplay that the game's kind of conditioned you to up to this point, if you've been actually using the warp zones and uh, doing all the vehicle races. Because, you know, all of the, all of the vehicle stage warps are, uh, were timed, so you want to get through those really quickly, and that's kind of up to this point. That's what you do in vehicle stages: is you just uh, rush forward as fast as you can, try to make it before the timer's out. And these, no, you got to go through, you got to crawl forward at a snail's pace to make sure that no bullshit jumps out and hits you. Because of course, again, we're at that stage in the game where you die in about three or four hits, so every hit is crucial, and these levels will only get longer and longer. Oh. Why is this fucker even here? Just get me... We're, we aren't about clock skills anymore. Why even bother? Why even pretend? Don't make me fight an enemy as clock. Let's just get to the vehicle shit. I don't even... I think this is the... Oh, okay. I thought that was the motorbike. Okay, yeah. This is one where you definitely want to take it slow with this guy. This is one of the longer levels, but not super duper difficult. Although, again, because it's so long, if you do end up getting killed, it's... And again, same, same as with the acrylic levels, no checkpoints, super aggravating, gotta replay everything if you end up dying. This is another. This is the other way that the, yeah, your playtime just inflates dramatically if you end up having to uh, retry a bunch of these flea levels over and over again. And yeah, you might be tempted, I'm just, and yeah, you can just go up here, skip the enemies, and try to get through, or actually I think you can get through with, yeah, hitbox is that forgiving, that tiny actually, that you only need one block, or you know what, I can get these both at once. But yeah, these guys actually can shoot you from off screen, and from a surprising range off screen as well, so even though a lot of the time you'll be tempted in these levels to, uh, to just, uh, go, just rush right by an enemy and not even bother with them, but in general, uh, the game will punish you for doing so. You'll typically want to take care of each enemy as you see them, just because, uh, honestly, almost every enemy is there for a reason. Like, almost all of the enemies in the flea pits here are accompanied by some kind of obstacle or some kind of barrier or something that makes it them like a pain in the ass. So they'll be firing at you constantly. And of course, they all fire, like, projectiles as well. They're all annoying. They, that's not true, I guess. They're all annoying in their own different ways, though. The bats move super fast. It's another one of those just dumb enemies that just rush at you faster than you can react to them. Bullshit. These guys are just annoying. They appear in clusters and shoot projectiles at you constantly. Aimed projectiles right at you, so you gotta be constantly be moving. And they take forever to kill. And then you got the hopper but guys, which are probably the worst of all. Especially if you get them on like an upward slope. They'll, they'll just like shoot you from off screen before you even have time to react. Fuck. Didn't even see that. Thought it was just flea gunk. Okay, again, kind of abusing the hitboxes here. Okay, yeah, as you can see, yep, got four of these guys shooting at us at once. I believe this is the last bit of the level, though. Or not necessarily the last bit of the level, but the last of this particular type of room in this level. Oh, can I collect shells with this? Oh, nice. Actually, yeah, I do want to be collecting shells now, though, because, yeah, I guess I, I said earlier that, yeah, seven levels, seven lives, gotta average one death per level. That's actually not true. We'll be collecting at least some extra lives. Okay. The bats are the exception, actually. You do want you do want to rush through those guys because they spawn infinitely. Infinitely? Infinitely. I think this is the end of the level, but I'm not going to take any chances. What? Okay, apparently I missed the trigger there, or something. <laughs> oh yeah, you can totally have another go if you fucking die eight more times before clearing the next two levels. But no, it wasn't fun, so... 
Pla yeah, Plock is fucked in the head, if that wasn't obvious already. This is actually going surprisingly well, though. I don't think I've died on a single flea pit level yet. This is where it starts to get really bullshit, though. If I remember correctly, this is the motorcycle level, which is probably the most one of the more annoying vehicles to control in the game. And uh, so, yeah, we've got that to look forward to. You might think, oh, it's just another ground vehicle, just another unicycle or... What would you even call it? Jeep, I guess the other one was? The thing is, though, that this is... Yeah, it it rolls down hills a lot quicker. And it's got this annoying grenade attack, which has, like, no range. Even the hopping fleas basically outrange you in this thing. So, yeah, you got a really inconvenient attack that's not very well suited for a lot of the obstacles that the game throws at you in this level. And as usual, you got to be crawling forward inch by inch to make sure that nothing jumps at it, out at you. Which, yep, it will. If I had just rushed forward there, I would have gotten fleed. I could have gotten fleed anyways, just had a projectile drop down on me. Fuck. Misplayed that. There, There is actually a sweet spot uh, where you can just get uh, right next to those fleas and their projectiles will go right over you. Uh, unfortunately, obviously, with the way the grenades lob out of this motorcycle, you can't abuse that. Instead, you've got to basically, you basically got to get yourself in the enemy's sweet spot where their projectiles are raining down on you from like maximum range. Faster than yours are, even. They have a much easier time hitting you than you hitting them. Okay, one health pickup. I believe that's the only one in the level. Of course, why would a fucking flea pit level ever give you more than one health pickup? I guess you can outrange these guys, actually, by uh, jumping when you attack. But yeah, we're actually not really that close to finishing this one. Got a fair bit of level left to go, son of a bitch. And yeah, see, he's got he's like king of the hill up there, that son of a bitch. He's king of the hill and a son of a bitch. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's... Uh, what was I thinking? It's like, oh, is this level shorter than I thought? No, of course not. Yeah, it's, uh, the way all of these are actually situated, it's like they, they push you back. you got to go back and back and back until you're on the goddamn hill. Where it's like they're... Because, yeah, the way the, the way the, the, those projectiles... The, the way they arc and accelerate as they go towards the ground, you basically... Like, if they're coming at you from, like, high enough off-screen, you basically just can't react to it. It'll drop down on you, like, faster than you can fucking think. No! That was the last fucking jump! Oh! Oh, yeah, the acceleration on that fucking thing is really difficult to control, especially on slopes. Fuck! Yep, we gotta do all that again. Welcome to the flea pit, bitches! Son of a bitch. On the plus side, we're close to an extra life, I guess. God, I need uh, another drink before I do this. Ah. Uh. So I, I don't know, who's responsible for, or I guess the Pickford brothers are responsible for this, actually. They're the game designers, they're probably the ones whose idea it was. They're the ones with the stupid flea pit idea that it said, oh yeah, this would be a great way to end the game. Fuck. I mean, it doesn't... Okay, actually, to be honest, it pretty much does ruin the game. On a normal plot run, even if I'm playing on normal, if I'm just playing for fun on normal, I will not do the flea pit most of the time. Like, honestly, I, I won't even wait till a game over. I'll, on my first death in the flea pit, I'll just quit. It's that aggravating and frustrating to go through. There's just no fun to be had from this point forward in the game. As far as I'm concerned, the game the game ends at Rocky Fella, which indeed it does if you play on Child's Play mode, so... And honestly, it's not a disaster or anything. You've still got, like, you know, a good couple hours, or... I guess we're actually just over two hours, but, you know, a good 90 minutes of, like, a really good, fun, solid 2D platformer. That, uh, very... Fuck. Wouldn't let me jump there. Something about the hitboxes or something. I don't know. It begins. So, what, this is the fourth flea level, so I think we've got three more, I think, plus the final boss after this. Which is also not exactly a pushover. There's a consistent pattern you can lock her into, but the timing is tricky. We'll get to that when we get to it, though. I don't even know how I'm going to divide these things. There's no predicting how long the flea pit is going to go, really. 
like I said, we're at like two hours now. It could well be like another hour before I get to the end here because every try takes so freaking long and I lose so much progress with every death. Okay, and yet, you know, you're tempted to speed through, but you really can't. Speeding through just leads to deaths, which leads to game overs, which means leads to the exact opposite of speeding through. Game overs leads to replay the last four levels. Honestly, though, I can't afford... I can really afford to take a few hits in this early section, just because I know I got the fruit coming up. Assuming I can even make it to it this time. There we go. Oh, God, look at that. I was holding left there the whole time, and I just barely, barely stopped that in time. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly if it comes across just how... I don't know, how tricky this thing is to control. It's like, normally I like... Normally I like that in games, when it takes a little bit of finesse to get your character to... Or you know what, I don't, I'm not, I don't need to just kill fleas anymore. Just need to get to the exit. Oh, and yeah, these things have so many invincibility frames. Fuck. No more fruit to the end either. This is a failed run. Oh, and again, yeah, if you miss those jumps, yeah, redo half the level, sucker. Fucking flea pit. Wow, this is... <laughs> this is actually not... This is not going terribly yet, and I'm still, like, super salty. Just for... Just the... F Even if it goes well, just the fact that I have to play through this shit. Yep, that was... Obscured by the foreground gate thing there. Nothing I could do about that. Ugh. Okay, this is actually no longer going well. At this rate, I'm gonna get a fucking game over and have to... Oh, and oh, the plot continues are not aligning either at this point. I need to beat the next two levels too without getting a game over. Or else I'll have to replay this one. That would be a disaster. I might even... I'm not, a, to be honest, I'm not above safe stating my way through this bullshit if need be. I would love to get uh, 1cc of this on camera for an LP, but uh, if worst comes to worst, like I'm fine with the way the gameplay and commentary is gone up to the, done up to this point, I will save state, like not even like save state between stages, just to, you know, get like a sensible checkpoint system of sorts. No, I will save state like every 10 seconds to get through this in a timely fashion if I need to. But we're gonna wait till we get a game over first, of course. We're gonna see if we can at least, we're gonna at least try to get that 1cc first. I can't even tell if I killed him already. Oh, there he goes. Could just have easily has been a, pro have been a projectile from off screen that would have damaged me and there would have been not much I could do about it. Or actually, yeah, just in case I take Oh, uh, can I actually... Okay, there we go. If I take damage from the next couple fleas, I can just go back and get that health. Fucking bullshit. Okay, yeah, that was un just unavoidable there. It's like, yeah, he's... Yeah, but basically if he jumps and shoots at the same time... Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, basically if he jumps and shoots at the same time, there's nothing you can do. Because, yeah, he's got, he's got, like, your whole range of motion covered there. This is actually going spectacularly bad. I, th I think the run that I beat this on, I or the one, the one that I one CC'd, like I pretty sure I beat this in like three tries. I had more lives stockpiled too, because yeah, I didn't die so many times on like uh, Rocky fella and shit. Yeah, it kind of jumps the gun. Ah, fuck. And of course, yeah, if these things miss a lot, what is even the point of these? It's just a waste time at the start of the level. This would be a neat obstacle, too. That's actually, you know, the kind of punch the switch to move the platform thing. That is a neat obstacle that would be well suited for, like, a proper stage that actually, like, uses the basic plock mechanics that are fun. This game has solid fundamentals. I enjoy, it is a joy to play, mostly, other than, you know, kind of the small problems I mentioned with the fundamentals, with the, you know, the kind of slightly subpar, suboptimal camera, and... Actually, yeah, two cameras for 2D games are something I've actually been paying attention to. Anyways, what are the other small problems? 
Honestly, yeah, the fundamentals are actually pretty much solid. It's mainly the level design where all the problems come in. And honestly, even the camera wouldn't be as much of a problem if the levels were more sensibly designed. Like Ristar, in this example. Ristar has the same style of camera, where it's like you go forward and it kind of drags the camera with you, and you're slightly in front of, like, the halfway mark. It's like you got less... You got less vision forward because the camera's uh, a bit slow on the draw. And that's that's fine if the game levels are like designed around that. Like, Ristar moves at a slow enough pace that you don't really... You know, it would be nice if the camera worked in a more sensible way, but you don't... You, you don't really need it. Nothing ever, The game is slow-paced enough, nothing comes at you quickly enough that you're, like, really desperate for that extra screen space, that extra bit of heads up, that extra bit that you can see forward. Whereas Plock, not so much a lot of the time, especially, again, at those first... the first set of levels and the very last set of levels, it especially becomes an issue. Okay, and yeah, again... Yep, gotta, 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 gotta make those jumps. And again, you might just randomly get fucked over because you're jumping on slopes. Whoa! I missed the... Fuck! And yeah, you can, you can, like, barely... Okay. Yeah, I can't even see what I need to do. Uh, just like a... Just like an extra... F like, yeah, if, if the camera were exactly, like, vertically... Or, sorry, horizontally centered on clock here, that would give me, like, just enough extra forward vision to fucking see what I'm doing. I'm gonna game over right on this stage. This is fucking terrible. It really is enough to drag down the game as a whole, too. I, as I often say, your last impressions in video games are often as important as first impressions. And sadly, this game makes a very, very poor final impression. Actually, it doesn't make the greatest first impression either. Like I said, Cotton Island. You kind of got to get through Cotton Island before you get to the really good parts of the game. Oh, well. I mean, you know, what's here is good, and you've got a game mode that's specifically designed around cutting out all the garbage anyways, and honestly, fixing a lot of the problems. It's kind of dumb. I, I almost feel that there must have been someone on the design team who, like... Who saw? It almost seems that way, that there's someone on the, the design team who saw the problems with this game and said, no, we need, to, we need to slow down these enemies, we need to reduce the invincibility frames, and we need to cut out all these shitty levels. And probably someone else, pro probably, yeah, the, probably the, like the main designers, I'm guessing the Pickford brothers are responsible for this, said, okay, fine, if, you, if you're so insistent on that, we'll do all that, but we'll lock in away, it away and mock the players for playing it that way by calling it Child's mo child's Play difficulty. But no, that guy whose idea Child's Play was, he knew he knew what he was fuck he knew his shit. Child's Play is definitely the best way to enjoy this game. Look at that, I had... And honestly, the fucking score, it's like you got projectiles coming down from above and you're fucking... HUD in the way the whole time as well. Actually, this is the time I gotta go down and that fleas jumped over to a stupid location as well. Oh my fucking god, we're down to four lives. Getting close to five, that was super lucky. Getting close to five, there we go. Five lives for the last... I guess still four levels. This is still level four. This is... Well, this is gonna be a whole video of this. I honestly feel like I should maybe segregate the flea pit to its own. Like, I almost feel like I'm not doing the game justice by making it so that, by, like, you know, making it so that a full third or whatever of the LP is just me bitching about the flea pit. But honestly, like, representative of the game, like, this is a third of the game if you actually play it to completion. This is, this is actually in the game. This is a real thing that they put in here. Okay, we're... In good shape for this one. I think this is it. Okay. That actually wasn't even the worst level, but, uh... Yes, it does. He seems suspiciously happy about how much this levels, these levels stink, but whatever. Yeah, just... I don't know. Party on, little weirdo.